Our next speaker is Dr. John Thaddeus Bukowski. Dr. Bukowski is the founder of the Tepeyac Family Center in Fairfax, Virginia. Tepeyac Family Center is a nonprofit, faith based health care facility with a medical staff that includes six obstetrician gynecologists and one nurse practitioner. The center is committed to the sanctity of life, serving the underserved and women who are in crisis pregnancies. The center is its the parent organization of the center is Divine Mercy Care. The Tepeyac Family Center is unique for three reasons. It is the only Catholic OBGYN medical practice in Northern Virginia. It is, in the opinion of Steve Koop, the largest known contingent of NFP-only OBGYNs in the world. It is the largest OBGYN practice of its kind in the United States. Both media and medical professionals turn to the Tepeyac Family Center for answers and comments on the medical moral issues of the day, such as conscience protection, contraception, abortion, stem cell research, and the general practice of medicine. Please give a warm welcome to Dr. John Burkowski. delight to be here with you all this afternoon. Um, I just wanted to thank uh, Christus Medicus and Michael Day and the Detroit Guild of the CMA and Steve Koob of One More Soul of putting this on. Uh, it was a lot of work trying to get this set up for April Fool's Day. <laughs> and a lot of what we talked about this morning does make me think uh, that there's something foolish in, in God's ways in all of this. Um, it is interesting that, uh, that we are here today uh, talking about renewal and health care. And in uh, preparing for this, um, I always get embarrassed when people honor me or honor us for being pro-life, like we are pro-life doctors. There's actually priests for life, as if they're priests for death. I find it to be quite uh, ridiculous um, and quite foolish. Um, I also was trying to prepare for this talk, and uh, I was looking at the Wall Street Journal uh, talking about Detroit. And uh, there was an article just last Friday by Ed Glazer about how Detroit's decline is happening, that it lost another 25% between the last decade. Another 20% were lost in the 70s. And it talks about how they're creating technologies to try to renew this. And he says, the country doesn't need more people movers. It needs unleashed, educated entrepreneurs. And they will only be held back by taxes being funneled into fanciful make-work projects in a futile attempt to fix our economic malaise. I find that to be quite short-sighted. Ed should have taken a page of uh, Bishop Vasha's sermon this morning. Bishop Vasha encouraged us that our work flows out of our first relationship with God. And I'd like to talk about relationships today for the next 15 or 20 minutes. I know we're running behind. Relationships are crucial. He talks about it as a sacred trust. So this is the problem. If all you ever do is all you ever get done, then all you ever get is all you ever got. And it's not Tim Von Dolan. John Paul's last text, this was given the day after he died, on that eve of Divine Mercy Sunday, to humanity which sometimes seems bewildered and overwhelmed. Raise your hand if you feel that way. The power of evil, selfishness, and fear, the risen Lord offers his love and pardons, reconciles, and reopens hearts to hope. It is love that converts hearts and gives peace. I just finished a 25 medical school tour with medical students for life. And believe it or not, love and mercy resonate in medical schools, even in the hearts of darkness. We believe at Divine Mercy Care that medicine is an act of mercy. It is not an entitlement, it is not a right. If you house the homeless, feed the hungry, and clothe the naked, you see the sick. So for us, and for you, for you, medicine is an act of mercy. And our motto is about transforming hearts through health care. These are some basic principles that we use. Hate the disease, but love the sinner. Hate the disease, but love the patient. That resonates. We believe that health is based on the relationships found in community. This is language that we're coming up with because we have to, we work in the world, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes they're not, people out there are still babies. 
we oftentimes have to feed them milk, not meat. And so we had to learn a language to speak at the medical schools. We had to take John Rawls' political philosophy of political liberalism and use the principles of John Paul, his personalism, to even get them to understand where we were coming from. We spoke to audiences between 60 and 160 people. Eight to, eight to two, four to one, were pro-choice to pro-life. We spoke for 20 minutes on conscience protection and spoke for an hour in Q&A. We're trying to create a language that resonates, not with us, because we're the believers, what resonates with them to bring them closer. It's what Tim talked about. It's what Richard Dorflinger talks about. It's what we were all, it's what Father uh, Bishop Vasa was talking about. Health is based on the relationships found in community. The essential relationship is the one between mom and the, her unborn child, and the patient and her doctor. It's what Sister talked about beautifully in, with Napro technology. And then the doctor with God, because ultimately, as Bishop talked about, there is an eternal factor to this. It's not about, while political people kick this around like a political football, this is our life. This is, this is, this is salvation. This is work. This is grace. It's love. And so what we want to do is we want to create these relationships between mom and unborn, mom, woman, man, and doctor, doctor and God, and then the other pro-life entities within the community. We believe it goes like this in our place. Health is based on the relationships found in community. You hate the disease, but love the patient. You never get rid of the disease by killing the patient with the disease. We believe that medicine is an act of mercy. And so therefore, we believe that we can love enough in medicine so abortion becomes unwantable. Once again, everybody says safe, legal, and rare. Safe, we need to regulate those clinics. Somebody said this morning, it's passing a bill is one thing, but enforcement is another. Enforcement, remember, laws are not going to change people's hearts. To look to them for answers is important, but the answer is relational. And I'm going to agree with, Dr. with uh, Mr. Tim, Mr. Von Dolan, that it's in that magic between the doctor and the pregnancy center that that's where that relationship starts, and it reverberates through the community, and it creates love. So we believe we can love enough so abortion becomes unwantable. Safe, legal, and rare. That's the mentality, right? Safe, get them regulated. Legal, you got to bring it to a vote eventually. Rare, the only way you're going to make it rare is if we love enough. And I think the members of the pro-life community haven't done that very well. We're all bickering. We sometimes argue between different forms of uh, fertility awareness, we, uh, between different type of pregnancy centers. Finally, finally, the Catholic Medical Association is talking about topics that are going beyond the traditional limitations that we've had in the pro-life community. New models are coming up, like Mr. Von Dolan's in Austin, Texas, or Parker's in Ohio, or ours. This is fascinating, because when we got started, when I first got started, there was only two or three. My wife and I started in the basement of our house and with two friends. My wife's a saint, so is Mrs. Von Dolan. <laughs> I speak from experience there. But I can tell you that it's, it's, we went to the community. We were a for-profit practice. We raised $60,000. A philanthropist pulled out on us because we weren't credible. Well, now we have some street credibility at the Tepeyac Family Center in Divine Mercy Care, and so do you. Because more and more women are desiring of this method of NAPRO technology and fertility awareness and cooperation with their fertility rather than suppression. So remember, it's love that converts hearts. Ultimately, we have to figure out a way of reinventing our personal brand. I think this came from a Harvard Business Review that I read. I do believe Jesus Christ is the center of this. But I do believe that the NFP community has to reinvent their brand. I think Catholic health care has to reinvent their brand. <clears throat> Leverage our points of difference. We can talk about that at a, at a later time. Develop a narrative. This is exactly, exactly what, um, what, Dr., uh, what Mr. Von Dolan was talking about. So we have three pillars at Divine Mercy Care. We want to serve, we want to inspire, and we believe in solidarity. Because ultimately it's about relationships. It's not about a technique. 
I think ultimately we have to infuse the incredible, the incredible power of uh, natural fertility awareness, NAPRO technology, with love, and that's what, that's what Sister was talking about. That's what these doctors do. So, Tepeyac Family Center has been very successful. We tried the DMC Pharmacy. We learned a lesson there. It failed. Pro-Life Pharmacy, Northern Virginia, it failed. But you learn lessons from your failure. You want to inspire. That's why we went on the Medical Students for Life tour. 25 universities. Harvard, BU, UVA, uh, FSU, uh, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, LSU, Tulane, South Alabama, Spring Hill College, uh, St. Louis U, Wash U, uh, University of Chicago, Minnesota, Mayo, Pitt, Carnegie Mellon, Hopkins, and then GW in Washington. We build it as a tour of how pro-choice are you. There are, no, there are enough students who are coming to work at our center and coming to work at the NAPRO centers where they're, they're asking for this, but they're only nascent. Talk about, I loved uh, Tim's analysis from conception to birth. They're nascent. Those medical students, there's three of them, two of them, Five of them. We would speak at the Mayo Clinic. There were six pro-lifers and 80 non-pro-life. Do you know most people are pro-choice, they're not pro-abortion? I'm telling you, this is where we can inspire others, and I believe that this community here is going to do that. We're thinking about a Lejeune Fellowship, something like Blackstone that the lawyers do down in the, in the southwest part of this country. And also we believe in solidarity. Because I believe that if you can bridge, and I just found this from my friends at my table, Christine and Kristen, if we can combine, if we can combine the principalism that all of us doctors learn, beneficence and all these other principles, when you stand before the power of death, when you stand before that crisis, that woman who's bearing a child she doesn't want, when you're staring at somebody who's like my daddy, 88 years of age, and facing his end, all of those constructs of the world fall short. We have to learn to infuse the principles of this age with the personalism of John Paul II. Use his language and his principles. People just shake their heads. That's why they came afterwards and talked for an hour to us. Complementariness, original loneliness. They just sit there. They want it. And yet they don't know why they want it. So these, were our, these are the three principles, service, inspiration, and solidarity. The pillars of the Tepeyac Center, and once again, this is not rocket science, excellent medicine, follow the traditional Catholic principles and, that are biblically based, but see, see the underserved in your daily work. We're the in. I'm telling you, we've been doing this since 94. We were for profit, but things changed. As margins shrink and malpractice rises, and we get less and less people, out there really wanting to travel because of insurance, we went nonprofit back in 2005. We begged. We begged for our, to our community. I believe in subsidiarity. It's a great principle. People in their own communities know what the right answer is. They do, much better than the federal government. It's fascinating when you start building relationships with people in your community. It's amazing. But this idea of bridging OBGYN with the Pregnancy Center is crucial. We've done it for a pretty long time. I'm telling you, it is absolutely essential to this renewal in health care. When you see talks given, they'll have 40 Days for Life, the counselors. They'll have the politicians. They'll have the pregnancy centers. They may have a maternity home. Where are the doctors? Where? We're encouraging these young students, if they really want to be pro-life, go learn your craft in a pregnancy center. That's where I learned mine, when I had my conversion back in uh, 87. We now do 700 deliveries a year, 130 are underserved. Gabriel Project self-pays, nurse practitioners and staff. So these are some of these core values we talk about. Know your community. It's the essence. It's the love God and love neighbor. It's what we talked about today at Mass. It's Eucharistic. It's communion. You all, it's fascinating. We started to talk um, at these medical schools, and I used Frances Kissling, the former president of Catholics for Choice. Her op-ed piece in the Washington Post is essential for us. She believes that you have to leave behind your political 
values that got you into this mess back in the 70s behind. They don't resonate today. The world's turned upside down. It used to be a majority pro-choice. Now it's majority pro-life. Why is that? She believes it's because the pro-life community does a better job of caring for the woman and the fetus. And she's saying to her own pro-abortion community, by God, we have to come to grips with the increasing visibility of the fetus, the humanity. When we say things like every abortion stops a beating heart, it doesn't resonate with the community that we're trying to influence. Because that pregnancy is going to wreck them. That's why they don't. It may be human, but as uh, the famous book somebody put up there, Our Bodies, Ourselves, there's another book out there called Women's Bodies, Women Wisdom by Christiane Northrup. She basically says in it, she goes, you know, abortion kills two people, an unwanted baby that will be abused, and a woman's life that will be wrecked. Comma, quotes, at least abortion only kills one life. They're admitting it. We're postmodern. The language, when you say compassion, I loved it. Bishop Fascia says, come passion, what Benedict says. Doesn't resonate. Their compassion is to take a Down syndrome child in utero and deliver him at 22 weeks. Why? Because his life's a burden. That's what the world believes as compassion. So we really need to know our community. We believe that we're doing social justice and the gospel of life. It's both and. It's not either or. It's not left or right. It's not Republican conservative. It's both. We do get inclusive language to get, mo to get more patients. We want to create a model that is viable financially. We believe in the power of Jesus Christ. We stepped out in faith, my wife and I, and the other doctors who came to join us. Oh my gosh. They put up a lot to come. These docs who are jumping in here, these, raise your hands again. The OBs and family practitioners here and nurses, all healthcare people, please raise your hand. These men and women absolutely are giving everything for us. That's why we need conferences like this. I hope later on tonight we can talk, we can share ideas and get best practice models. That, this conference is that vital to the men and women here. Nothing less. We're not NFP only. We believe we're more than a technique. It doesn't resonate. It resonates with people on our side, but I'm trying to bring in people who don't even understand what their body's telling them. You have to know all the NFP methods. Nonprofit works for us. We tried the for-profit model, but it just didn't. I think every single state, the, 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 the nuances um, can be quite profound in each state. Partner with pregnancy resource centers or pregnancy resource centers. So we're partnering with these different organizations. Why? Because we want to love enough so abortion becomes unthinkable. The last line about Catholic health care is fractured, CHA versus USCCB. We talked about it this morning. So, the stage is set to make straight this path. We must transform our practice of Catholic medicine, shake up the status quo in Catholic health care, and challenge ourselves as Catholics, our identity. Once again, it's all about relationships, I believe. It's demanding, relentless, and thankless at times. But hard times can be a great time to rethink long-held strategic assumptions about our practices, challenge decades of conventional wisdom in our industry, and push ourselves to learn, to le learn, grow, and innovate. I believe we stand on the shoulders of incredible saints in this practice. The Tom Hilgers, the John Kipleys, you know, the, um, the Mercedes Wilsons, the Sister Hannah Clauses, we stand on their shoulders. We are trying to push their vision into the future. So, there was ten essential questions. We're going to go through these. There, there's no real answers. This is more for provocation sites. Do we see opportunities the competition doesn't see? Once again, we're not to outcompete, but we have to redefine the terms of the con. Because once again, I think the NFP, we need to do something to outreach further. Do we have new ideas about where to look for new ideas? I know in healthcare today they talk about using flight checklists to make surgery safer, going outside the traditional medical field and looking at airline safety. Are we the most of anything? What are we the most of? Differently stated, if you do the things the same way everyone else does in your field, why would you expect to do any better? If we went out of business tomorrow, who would miss us and why? I'm telling you, when I hear those testimonies, that sister gave, they're out there. They're absolutely out there. And that's what keeps us going because we know we're making a difference. 
have we figured out how to organize, uh, or, or how our organization's history can help shape its future? How, where do we come in Catholic healthcare? We have to know the history. Do we have customers that can't live without us? Once again, we have a gala every year put on by our patrons, not a professional organization, but by our patients. We clear about $250,000 with this. From confidence to integrity to pride and to passion, we've got to help move people that way. Sadly, it's kind of similar to Romans 5. Do, you, do our people care more than the competition? I believe we do. Are we getting the best contributions from the most people? Meaning we talk about these different ways that there are people inside your practice who have good suggestions, outside, uh, different colleagues. That's what I'm hoping that we can get through here. That we can actually talk about these issues and come to what is considered best practice models. Are we consistent in our commitment to change and are we learning as fast as the world is changing? All I know is that this conference, and I'm going to end it here, is that we are truly on the road to Emmaus. That's what this conference is about. It's make straight the path. We need one of those moments in time where we go from sorrow to joy. That's what Bishop talked about this morning. We need one of those moments today. The crisis, these times, you talk about Thomas Paine, these are the times that try men's souls and women's souls. We're there. My daddy, a school teacher, had on his blackboard, what makes men good Christians makes them good citizens. Tom, um, Daniel Webster. This is where we're at. There is nothing, the time is late. And yet there's, as Tim said, there's a critical mass here. There, women deserve better. Men deserve better. And um, I thank you for listening. <laughs>